Hey all you addicts out there, welcome to another tutorial by Addicted Fishing. I'm Jordan Kanigi. Today we're out here on the river looking for winter steelhead and we're talking some techniques of fishing a double bead setup. What we're going to begin talking about today is probably the most important aspect of fishing these floats with a double bead, and that is your rod selection. Um, you always want to have a longer rod because we're going to be doing a lot of mending, whether you're in or out of a boat, and you want a long rod with a lot of flexibility so that you can mend that line gently to not inflict the float of, the, of your drift with these beads. So what we have here is a 9.9 Okuma Guide Select Pro. Wonderful, wonderful rod for this. This has a 6 to 12 line rating. That's pretty light, you can go a little bit heavier. The 10.6 model is a great aspect for this as well, but it's a little bit heavier, which is not a bad thing. What we have this guide select reeled with is a Okuma C40 Kaimar reel. I really like the C40 in this model because it has a lot bigger spool, so you can get more line on there and really a lot more pickup when you do see that float go down and you need to reel up quick on those fish. The, probably the biggest aspect of this, though, the most important part other than the rod length on this float fishing is your braided line. Okay, what I have here is the P-line, Teflon coated braided in the 30 pound. This is really, really good line because it floats and that's really is gonna help you a lot as you're fishing your float down river is having your floating line up on the surface of the river so that you can make nice, delicate mends and let that bobber work its way through the run. So line is very important. We'll talk more in the next tutorial about that floating line and why it is so important. On here, I have about a 15 to 20 foot bumper of 20 pound P-Line SS. And why I use that bumper is so that my float freely slides up and down on that fluorocarbon line rather than trying to hang up on this braided line which is supposed to be floating anyway. So that bumper is very important in my, in my mind. I always use it and it really helps a lot with getting your presentation down in front of the fish. What I have on here for a float today is a half ounce to a three quarter ounce. This is a clear drift. You can use any of the, the bobber dogging bobbers or any of these clear drifts or just a normal bow mac. Straight to a three way swivel with a piece of pencil lead on there. You can use your Dave's Tangle Freeze. You can use solid form pieces of lead, but this is about a half ounce, which I like to use uh, because it gets those beads down. You can change this heavier to lighter depending on really what you wanna be fishing, whether it's a nice long tail out or a big bucket where you have to get down really quickly. So from here, I go three feet down to a bead. Normally I use a 14 to a bigger or a bigger bead on that top bead to a to number four hook. These are nice, beautiful little number four hooks made by Mustad. They got a nice little outcropping to them. You lose a lot of fish bead fishing because of this hook size, so it's important to have one that's very sharp. Always keep those hooks sharp. And number four, so that you can get that bead floating down along the bottom and not be hanging up. Then I have another three foot leader straight down to my second bead, again with a number four hook. Usually I go a little bit smaller on this bead, but you don't have to. You can put bait on the end, you can put a piece of shrimp, you can put a coon shrimp, even a little bit of eggs, whatever you want. But that double setup is very effective, obviously, because you have two things in the river at once. So keep that in mind. We're gonna show you guys how to fish them. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is show you how to fish a couple of different styles of runs with this double bead setup. What we have behind us here is what we call more of a riffle. This is faster moving, it's heavier water. We call it brave water because it's kind of takes a little bit of bravery to cast into because a lot of snags. But what we're gonna find here is that these fish are gonna be nosing up behind big boulders and we need to get this double presentation right in front of them and drift it down in front of them. And then what the, what's gonna make that imperative is line management. So we're gonna go into that a little bit, show you guys how to fish a faster run like this and really kind of break it down and show you what it takes to get a good presentation. So what we're always going to do in any style of fishing, whether it's with a float or it's with a spinner or whatever, we're going to start close, we're going to make a medium cast, and then we're going to cast far. It's important to not walk up to the river and cast all the way across, because the fish don't always live on that side. They might live five feet in front of you. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to check my bobber depth, make sure I have the, the adequate depth to fish a run this shallow. I'm set at about three feet there, so that looks about good. What I'm always gonna do is I'm gonna fish my 45s if I'm standing on the bank. And even if you're in a boat, you wanna fish 45 degrees to 45 degrees. Letting your float go way down river and long lying it isn't always effective because once that current catches your bobber and your beads, it's gonna pick them up off the bottom and for the last 100 yards of your drift, you're not gonna be fishing at all. So fish the water that's in front of you, 45 to 45. So what I'm gonna do here and what I mean by that, I'm gonna cast at a 45 degree angle up. I'm gonna let that sink and I'm immediately gonna pick some of that line up off the water. What's crucial is to have about only 10 to 20 feet of line laying on the water at a time so that your 
drift is going the same speed as the current. You don't want to slow these beads down at all or else they come off of the bottom. So I'm going to do that again. I've cast it close. My second cast is going to be out a little bit further here. I'm going to fish that, keeping that 10 to 20 feet of line on the water, slowly working it down through to my 45 degree angle below me, and then I'm going to reel back in. Right about here, right about three quarters drift, I'm going to open my bail. I'm going to start letting line out by lifting my tip. Instead of just letting it fall straight off the, off the reel, which is going to create resistance, I'm going to lift up with my tip, and you can even close your bail in between each lift. And what that does is it allows that bobber to float at the same speed as the current, which is very important. So now that I've made my first two casts, I'm going to go to my third cast, which is my long cast. So I'm going to cast it even a little bit further upriver, a little bit further out, again, keeping a lot of that line up and off of the water, and mending at the crucial times. We're gonna talk mending in a, on a next tutorial, but what is really crucial here is that you do not inflict the bobber whatsoever, especially with all those beads down there. You want those things dragging along the bottom of the river. So I'm gonna make another mend here right before the end. See how I'm letting line out by lifting my tip and following it down the river to my 45 degree angle, and then I'm gonna bring that in. And what I'm gonna do after this, and why I say 45 is because I'm gonna either pull my anchor and move down river to the next spot where I could fish those 45s and make an effective cast, or I'm gonna walk myself down the bank to the next spot or river that I wanna fish, 45 to 45, and I'm gonna start close, go to the middle, and then go far once again. So another very important part of fishing a double bead setup or a double setup at all with a float is how you cast it. You can spend a lot of time during your day untangling your line because of the two hook setup. What it takes to make a nice cast is very slow and very, very delicate. We don't want to be whipping this out there because as we throw that weight in front of the beads, they go through the air swinging around in a circle and tangle up on themselves before it ever hits the water. So you'll spend a lot of the day floating your float through the drift not knowing that you're not fishing at all. So what I like to do is always a slow arching cast. I never really cast over my head. I go from side to side, whichever way, I'm, whichever way I need to cast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bottom bead I'm gonna leave about three feet of line out of the tip of the rod. I'm gonna set that bottom bead in the river and then slowly look over to where I wanna cast, identify my target, and do a slow arching cast into that spot. Again, up about 45 degrees. And why I'm gonna do it so slow is again, so those beads don't start whipping around in the air and hook on themselves. So bottom bead in the water, nice and slow, up to 45 and land it right there in the river. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow your line to arch out, get flat above the water, and then land flat so that it can sink straight down in front of those fish. So now we're gonna talk about identifying and fishing a tail out with the double bead. What's probably more important when fishing a tail out with these bead setups or a float setup is your depth of your bobber stop here. I have a little Bowmac bobber stop that I regulate my depth of my weight with. You wanna have it set right barely to the bottom in a tail out so that you, your presentation has an opportunity to completely drift down through the whole tail out without getting hung up. So bobber depth is very crucial. A lot of times I go up or down depending on which run I'm fishing and how I see my drift going. Your bobber should always be pointed at about a 45 degree angle down river showing that your weight is on the bottom and your beads are dragging along the bottom of the river through all the boulders and rocks. So what we're gonna do here again using our 45 to 45 technique we're in this tail out, our depth set just about perfect. It's about three and a half to five feet deep out there. So I'm set right. I'm gonna cast again at 45 up here. But what I'm gonna do a little bit differently in this hole than I did the last one because it was so fast was let my drift go a little bit further. So mending is gonna be more important. And stay tuned for another one of our tutorials where we're really gonna break down mending. Today, I'm just gonna show you how to fish this tail out. As it goes through, you see my bobbers pointed at a 45 degree down river. Again, I'm leaving only about 20 to 30 yards of line on the water, just like so. And I'm gonna keep that bail open, lifting my tip, giving it about 10 feet at a time and letting that drift all the way through to the end of the tail out, a little bit further than I normally would in a really fast run. So I'll go a little bit past 45, down there at the end, and I'm gonna bring that in. And that was my first cast. You saw how I started closer on that one. I'm gonna go with another cast here, a little bit further this time. And again, what is the most important part in knowing and identifying that you're fishing correctly in a tail out like this is the direction of your bobber. You see it pointing down river out there. I got a little bit of a bow carrying that, that presentation down through the rocks as it's dragging. This is basically drift fishing for dummies. We want that, basically we want that bobber dragging our presentation through the strike zone, but not too fast. 
the, the key with the steelhead is the speed of your presentation. You want it to be right about the exact speed of the current. So if that's not happening, you adjust your depth or you adjust your weight so that it's going just at the exact same pace as the current is. All right, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a little bit more on how to fish these double setups. This is a really basic rundown over how to fish this. Again, be sure and check your regulations to make sure that you can fish two hooks on your line on your local river. There's a lot of places that would be single barbless that this double technique isn't going to be legal. So even if you're using a single bead, this is the same method, the same line management, and the same techniques in fishing ripples and tail outs. So stay tuned. We have a lot more winter tutorials coming out here. We'll see you guys out there. All right, addicts, thank you so much for all your support on these videos. Be sure to come down here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to see more, get these alerts popping up so you can see all the good stuff we have coming out every day that helps you guys get out and enjoy this beautiful bounty that we have that is Salmon and Steelhead. Like and share this page out there so that the rest of the world can see it. Stay fishy and we'll see you guys out there on the river.